Today, we discuss Miro. Today, I want to talk about the hellscape that is technical diagramming, right? Everybody's nodding their heads right now, uh uh-huh. And there is a potential solution that I want to share. There was one name that several people brought up. I did some digging, and it's kind of nuts how much this program Miro has for developers. I have to share this. It could potentially be a game changer for you. So my favorite part about Miro is that half the work is already done. Like right now, typically we spend hours starting diagrams from scratch, gathering information. You get buy-in from every team. Uh, You know, that's a lot of work to do. But Miro has a full set of integrations with the tools you're probably already using. And they also offer open APIs and SDKs for custom solutions for all those niche diagramming use cases we have to do, right? So the end result is the same, but it doesn't take forever. It's a massive, massive time saver. I'm transforming basic flowcharts and network architectures, and it all lives in one place. So are you using Miro? Have you used it? I want to hear. That's M-I-R-O dot com. The mistletoe margarita, the Scrooge driver, the North Pole punch. The holidays call for cocktails, so get everything you'll need for them delivered with Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. So what's it gonna be? Classics like Bullet bourbon, Don Julio Reposado, or Kettle One, or maybe something new. Find it all on Drizzly where you can get beer, wine, and spirits delivered for any holiday festivity. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com today. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. The Neverland Podcast is brought to you by audible.com. You can get a free audiobook bu- audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com slash neverlandpodcast. There are over 100,000 titles to choose from. Then that goes on your iPhone, your Android, your Kindle, or any other MP3 player. The Neverland Podcast is... Episode 12. Welcome to Neverland. Take a start of the right and stay on till morning. Neverland. Good morning, Neverland! Yes, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good day to you. Grab your nearest pixie, give her a little shake over your head, think of that happy thought, and fly with me, your host as ever, Jeremy, off to Neverland once more. Uh, We're going to have a good old time today. I've got some real special audio I'm going to share with you today that should hopefully bring back some childhood memories and most of us that were born in the 80s. Uh, And if you weren't born in the 80s, I think you'll enjoy this show as well. But of course, as usual, I'd like to start start this off with a little bit of news that I find interesting and I hope that you find interesting as well. The first news, the Lego movie that it has been actually very successful. Uh, you could tell the success by the fact if you went on Facebook, I bet a lot of your friends were posting everything is awesome. And if you go back, uh, let's see... I guess about episode 10, I did a review of the Lego movie when I went to see it myself. Well, the Lego movie has now been set for a sequel to come out on May 26th of 2017, my birthday. Uh, Considering, let's see, this is 2014, I'm going to turn... Wow, I'll be about... (laughs) I'll be turning 40 at that time. Yeah, I know, I probably don't sound like it, but wow, I'm going to be turning 40. Holy cannoli. Anyway, all right, well... On other news, Warner Brothers is set to release The Man from UNCLE on January 16th of 2015. Uh, Now, for anyone older than me, you might have watched The Man from UNCLE. It was a television series. Uh, I believe it actually was the one famous for the... uh the song Secret Agent Man, that was kind of a parody on James Bond a little bit when you hear the tune of it. Odds are he won't live until tomorrow and all that stuff. Uh, well... Uh, the, once again, here's another old TV show who's getting a remake into a movie. Uh, the film is set to star in Henry, Henry Cavill, or Cavill, I'm not sure how to say his name, who recently seen as Superman in The Man of Steel, and Army Hammer, recently seen as the Lone Ranger in The Lone Ranger. Uh, so we'll, we basically have two stars who have already brought back 
uh, a character that people are familiar with from television or movies. Uh, so, uh, you know, no stranger to this type of thing. Uh, SuperheroHype.com says that it is set to be against the backdrop of the early 1960s at the height of the Cold War. The Man from Uncle centers on CIA agent Solo, uh, played by Henry Cavill, and KGB agent Kuryakin. I don't know if I'm saying that right at all, but that's played by Army Hammer. Uh, forced to put aside long-standing hostilities, the two team up on a joint mission to stop a mysterious international crime organization which is bent on destabilizing the fragile balance of power through the proliferation of nuclear weapons and technology. The duo's only lead is the daughter of a vanished German scientist who is the key to infiltrating the criminal organization, and they must race against time to find him and prevent a worldwide catastrophe. <laughs> Catastrophe! It was almost a catastrophe, me trying to say that word. Also, this is exciting. Doctor Strange. For anyone who's not familiar with Doctor Strange, he is Sorcerer Supreme. He's a Marvel Comics character, uh, known for all kinds of different magic and a lot of weird, wild stuff. And there's been kind of rumor stuff about maybe Johnny Depp would be awesome to play Doctor Strange and all this stuff. Uh, but anyways, Doctor Strange is currently looking for a director. And according to The Hollywood Reporter, the current names in contention include Mark Andrews, who's directed Brave, Jonathan Levine, who directed Warm Bodies, uh, Nicolaj Arcel from A Royal Affair, and Dean Israelite, the upcoming Welcome to Yesterday film. Uh, John Abel and Glenn Berger, who uh, are, I, were, I guess they were directors for Kung Fu Panda, are also said to have met with the studio on the project, but they are meeting as screenwriters. So I guess they haven't even wrote this yet. Uh, but, you know, things are moving along for a Doctor Strange movie. Now, will that mean he might pop up in an Avengers movie? I don't know. I don't know that he's actually been on the roster with the Avengers, but I'm not ruling anything out in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, also, for those of you who are fans of the ABC series Heroes, Heroes will return to ABC in a 13-episode miniseries called Heroes Reborn. So, you know, considering also 24 is going to make a comeback in some sort of a little mini-series, I don't know if this is going to spawn off to being a full series for either one of them, but I'm sure the fans will jump up and be watching those and be quite excited. Uh, also, photos have been released. This is kind of an odd thing here in Marvel Cinematic News, although this is not part of the regular Marvel Cinematic Universe because this is a Sony Entertainment and it's not being released through Disney. Uh, but photos have been released of the Green Goblin battling Spider-Man in Amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, here's the kicker. It is not Norman Osborn. It is Harry Osborn. So, for whatever reason, they have decided that Harry Osborn is going to become the Green Goblin before Norman will. What's the angle? I don't know. They're kind of doing things in slightly reverse order, but I guess they want to do things a little bit unpredictably. Uh, there has not been a series other than there was an animated series, The Spectacular Spider-Man, that made you think perhaps Harry was the Green Goblin before Norman was, but it turned out to be Norman all along. But this has not been done before to have Harry be the Green Goblin first. All we know, though, is they are all tied to Oscorp. So Oscorp, of course, is kind of the overall arching villain here in these films. Uh, will that continue into a Spider-Man 4? I don't know. Spider-Man 3, uh, from rumors are that we're going to see the entire Sinister Six. So we're working our way to it. And if you look in the trailer, you can actually see some Doc Ock arms and some vulture wings kind of in the background as somebody is walking past them, uh, presumably at Oscorp. We'll see what happens. That kind of puts a slight little eh on my comic nerdness. Uh, that having Harry as the Green Goblin first, but, you know, I can get over it because I still would like to see that movie. It looks very good. Uh, here's something, though, that's also kind of a kick in the pants for us pe people who are fans of the actual comic books. The Fantastic Four has been cast. Uh, Jamie Bell is playing Ben Grimm. Of course, he will be CG when he becomes the ever-loving blue-eyed thing. Uh, Michael B. Jordan is playing Johnny Storm. Kate Mara as Sue Storm and Miles Teller has been cast to play Reed Richards. Uh, Josh Trank is directing this film and filming is going to begin here in March. Now it is still questionable why you have a white female playing Johnny Storm and a black male playing... I mean, or a white female playing Sue Storm, you know, and Johnny Storm being played by a black male. It's kind of a little weird because they're supposed to be brother and sister, maybe from different parents because she's very white and blonde and, you know, they, they aren't looking at all alike 
uh, so I wonder what their angle is, because it's going to look a little weird. Now, there also is some controversy over casting a black male to play a, what is normally a white character in the comic books. Uh, now, I have heard some say that Johnny Storm kind of acts like a black man anyway. That, to me, actually sounds a little racist, because you don't act like a certain way just because of the color of your skin. Uh, and others people would say that you should stick to the comics and try to cast people who at least resemble the character that as have been around for over 50 years. I tend to sit in that camp because I'm a comic book nerd type person. I like, you know, when I see a movie based off something I have maybe loved for a long time, I like the characters that kind of resemble, you know, what I'm used to seeing. And so it is kind of a different switch. Uh, he might be very good in the role, who knows, but it is going to be kind of a weird thing. Uh, it was strange enough with Nick Fury being classed as Samuel L. Jackson. Absolutely love him in the part. He's been great, uh, and it, but it does kind of work because in the Marvel's Ultimate line, uh, they actually based Nick Fury off of Samuel L. Jackson, so it was, seemed appropriate to cast him, so that really wasn't a bothersome thing. However, most of the people out there who have only seen the movies or maybe have seen a cartoons where they have tried to make him look like the movies don't realize that the Nick Fury that has been around since I don't even know when is actually a kind of older white feller so it's kind of one of those things like no wait a minute if you're going to be into these characters we want you to kind of see how they were how we've grown up with them and everything and and they're not as recognized so but yes yeah, it's, it's a weird kind of controversial kind of thing uh, I'm not going to try to fall on one side or the other but I do have my opinions and I'm sure you probably have yours that being said, though, I still like Samuel L. Jackson. It was also that's kind of strangely comedic. As much as I love Lawrence Fishburne, they, when they cast him as Man of Steel to play somebody named Mr. White, uh, that was kind of funny and it did remind me of the Men in Black film when Tommy Lee Jones was irritated with, well, his character, you know, Kay was was uh, irritated at Will Smith's character, Jay, and he would uh, introduce him as Mr. White to kind of get on his nerves. Uh, and it seems like they were kind of doing that and it was a little bit strange. Although I do love Lawrence Fishburne, but I don't think they gave him a chance to really act the part yet you know they haven't really done much with the character and who knows with the batman superman we might see more stuff going on at the daily planet and maybe then we'll get to see you know lawrence fishburne on his take on mr perry white we'll find out uh, but that's also another strange casting i guess they're they're trying to appeal to maybe people who have similar skin color to come to view the movies uh and in fact Michael B. Jordan has said that, hey, people aren't going to care. They're going to come and see the movie anyway. Well, that is debatable. You've had two, you know, kind of so-so, okay, Fantastic Four movies so far. And trying to relaunch the series, uh, you're going to have the people who basically who are or like this type of movie who are like, oh, gee, I remember the other two. I really didn't like them that much. And then you're going to have the comic book purists who are going to be like, that doesn't look like Johnny Storm. He doesn't look like Johnny Storm. I don't like that. And they're not going to go. Uh, I'm predicting a failure. Um... As catastrophic as Ben Affleck playing Batman, I don't know. Uh, of course, it could be that we get a good look at this thing. We might get excited about it after we actually see something. So, you know, we, you know, it might end up being successful. But I, you know, I have a feeling they might have kind of, you know, made a dividing line between the comic book fans. And already with two lackluster films, they might not be able to get much excitement going on. So we'll just see what happens. Uh, in video games, this is exciting. Batman Arkham Origins. Blackgate, which was originally released for handheld systems, is set to hit gaming consoles. Uh, it's going to be available on, uh, on April 1st for purchase and download via your console, which would be a PS3, Xbox 360, or the PC. It will be, of course, on like the Microsoft Marketplace or Xbox Marketplace or the PlayStation Network. Uh, now, this is going to be pretty much the same game that's been on the handheld systems, only in high definition. Now, I don't know much about this game, but uh, it's Batman, and if it's anything like the other Arkham games, I have loved them. They are wonderful. I will actually be excited to download and try this out myself. Okay, moving right along, I do have a Song of the Week for you this week. Uh, song of the Week actually fits pretty well with the content that I am going to share with you today. It's by a band that maybe you haven't heard of called Reliant K. Kind of a pop punk kind of fun, really fun band. And they have a song called I'm Lion-O, which I'm going to play a clip for you. And uh, hopefully I will have a link for you on iTunes to be able to purchase the song, provided it is in the iTunes library. And you can find that link at NeverlandPodcast.com. So without further ado, Reliant K with I'm Lion-O.
Once again, I am sorry for the sudden cutoff I have with music selections, but I still have no idea how in the world to use a fader on this uh, program I've got called Cakewalk Music Creator. If anybody has any idea how I can get this to fade out, then please send an email to podcast at neverlandpodcast.com and let me know. I would sure appreciate it. Uh, while we're here, before I get to the exciting content that I have for you, which guess what? Yes, it's Thundercats related. So everybody get excited right now. Thunder! 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 Thundercats! Okay, now, if that didn't bring back any memories for you, then you either were too young or you never watched it. I, myself, I wasn't really a big fan of the Thundercats. Uh, I have heard other people say that Thundercats was, unfortunately, one of the cheesiest voice acting of shows you ever would have seen. And I didn't really get to see much Thundercats until I was a bit older, and I have to agree, the, the voice acting was very cheesy. However, if I'd have gotten a chance to watch the Thundercats, I might have been more into it. Uh, unfortunately, the Thundercats, when it was on, I was more interested in going outside and playing it by that time, and so I kind of missed out. I had wanted to see it, but I, you know, I really didn't see a whole lot of it um, at the time. So it was very kind of cool. It was a cool concept. I did, however, see. The later, uh, what was it, 2011, that they did a reboot of the Thundercats and kind of came up with a different storyline. I did see quite a bit of that, and I did enjoy it. Uh, uh, also, I did comparatively see the Silverhawks. I was a fan of the Silverhawks. My buddy Phil got me into the Silverhawks, which was animated and voiced actually pretty much by the same people who brought us the Thundercats. Uh, the Silverhawks, however, did not start as a toy. The toys came later. Uh, however, when you know, I watch the, the Silverhawks now, uh, they do have a, a DVD release. I watched that and it's like, wow, this was pretty cheesy. I uh, just as a kid, I didn't, I didn't really mind it. But of course, there's a lot of shows we watched as a kid when the eighties that was so hokey and so cheesy, but we just didn't care. And it's still fun to be able to go back and watch some of that and just remember. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm unfortunately, I'm missing the nostalgia of the Thundercats because I didn't watch it really as a child. I know I was probably deprived or something. Uh, so I'm not really going to give you an informative show where we're going to discuss the aqua, the uh, the Thundercats at this time. Uh, my wife was big into them and she used to watch them. And also my buddy Phil was big into them. Uh, but uh, at a later time, I will have one or two of them or both you know maybe all together to discuss the the thundercats and what they liked about it and you know the toys the cartoons and everything else so that's not what we're quite going to do today because because i am fond of being able to revisit subjects i promise you we will get back to that at some point what i have for you today that i'm sure you're going to enjoy is an audio book kind of read along type of book well the audio from it you know of course i can't bring you the book you can't really look at it But I have the audio from a story called Exodus, which actually is the first episode from the Thundercats television series. So, I'm sure now you are quite excited. And if you're not, well, doggone it, I already told you to get excited. Go outside, jump out your office or your car or whatever, stand up, put your arm in the air and go, Thundercats, ho, really loud. And people will think you're completely nuts. But you will suddenly then be excited to hear the audio I have for you. And because the book doesn't really start with the uh, audio of the opening theme, I figure I'll play the opening theme just to get your juices flowing. Thank you. 
Thundercats, Exodus. The planet Thundera had only a little time left. Soon it would explode into glowing fragments and be snuffed out of the sky forever. Already its people had taken off in a fleet of starships to seek a new home in a distant galaxy. The leaders of these space pioneers were a special race of beings called Thundercats. With heavy hearts, they watched their doomed planet on the flagship's telescreen. It's finished, Jaga, said the pilot. The chief nodded sadly. Yes, any moment now, Panthro. Shall I awaken Lionel? Ask another of the group. No. Chitara objected. Why upset the child needlessly, Tigra? Wake him, ordered Jaga. If he is to rule, he must learn to take the bad with the good. Chitara went to the young prince's sleeping compartment and shook him gently. Lionel, what? Oh, Chitara. I am sorry to wake you, but Jaga bids me bring you to him. Uh, sure, okay. Knuckling sleep from his eyes, the boy arose from his bunk. His faithful attendant, Snarf, woke up too, snuffling and snorting. Hey, where are you going? Lino needs his sleep. He will have ample opportunity for sleep on this voyage. Chitara replied. For now, it is important that he join Jaga on the flight deck. What's up, Jaga? The boy asked when they reached the control room. Come closer, Lionho, said the elderly chief. Watch the telescreen. The fiery ball on the screen exploded, rocking the ship. Ooh, what was that? That was Thundera, Lionho, the planet we called home. Th Thundera? But... The little prince fought back tears. Never again would he see his boyhood scenes. Jaga put an arm around him. Yes, Lionel. Thundera is gone. But the code of Thundera will live as long as you, as Lord of the Thundercats, carry it in your heart. It will be your sacred duty to rule according to that code in our new home, wherever that will be. Justice, truth, honor, loyalty. I will, Jaga. I swear it, said the prince. But then his voice broke. I mean, I'll try. He was, after all, just a little boy. Yes, I know, said Jaga. It is an enormous responsibility for one who is not yet a man. But you are not alone, Lionel. The nobles gathered here, Panthro, Chitara, Tigra, even uh, Wily Cat and Wily Kit will be teaching the skills you need to rule wisely and well. <laughs> no mention of old Snarf, I notice. The prince's faithful pal muttered sulkily. Snarf, snarf. There is something else you must see, Lion-O, said Jaga. The most important part of your heritage. He led the way into the sword chamber. This is the mystic sword of omens and the source of our powers the eye of thundera as Lionel took it from its case the sword began to glow its crossbar curled forming two eye holes and the sword seemed to grow larger and heavier until the boy could no longer hold it it fell from his grasp with a clang J jaga cried the prince. The sword is alive! Yes. But there are holes in the hilt, Jaga, and I don't see any eye. The eye sleeps until needed, Lionel. And these are not merely holes you see in the hilt. Looking through those magic apertures will give you sight beyond sight. Lionel struggled to pick the sword up again. I... I can't lift it, Jaga! No, you have not the strength yet, but... The old chief broke off to say, Snuff, would you ask the other Thundercats to join us? Okay, snuff, snuff, snuff. Jaga went on. But it will not be long before the sword feels natural in your hand. The other nobles came in. You wish to see us, Jaga? Yes. You will all have to learn new ways as well. We don't know what awaits the Thundercats in our new home. 
but these arrangements and weapons will help protect you. Jaga opened a secret cabinet and handed out its contents. Chitara, Tigra, Panthro. Each one got a new costume and special weapon. Chitara was given a throwing stick, which in a flash could become as long as she wished. Tigra, a bolo whip that could curl like a steel spring around a foe's arm or leg. And Panthro received a strange fearsome weapon consisting of two bars called nunchucks joined by a chain. Suddenly, the spaceship rocked as if from a missile exploding nearby. Jaga, we're being attacked, cried Tigra. The old chief's first thought was for the prince's safety. Lion-O, remain in the sword chamber, he ordered. No, if there's to be fighting, then I should... Please do not argue. Snarf, look after him. Yep, you bet, Jaga. Snarf will keep Lion-O safe. Don't worry. The other rushed back to the flight deck. Have you identified the enemy? Jaga asked Tigra. Yes, they're from the planet Plundar. Mutants, gritted Panthro. Always those blasted mutants. Chitara was studying the enemy's markings. The ships bear the insignia of reptilians, jackalmen, monkeyans. Tigra was surprised. They're fighting together as allies? But, but they've always been at war among themselves, said Wily Cat. And his sister, Wily Kit, added. Yeah, they hate each other as much as we hate them. The Alliance is probably a last desperate attempt to seize the Eye of Thundera, said Jaga. Aboard the enemy command ship, the three mutant leaders watched as their raiders fired again and again at the peaceful Thundarian transports. <laughs> Jackal Man barked gleefully. A direct hit, Slive! Superb! Hissed the reptilian leader. The Thundercats had seen the ship behind them explode. We just lost one, Jaga! Panthro reported grimly. The old chief spoke into his mic. Flagship to convoy! Assume defensive formation! The enemy saw the transport craft obey Jaga's command. <laughs> They're forming a circle! Chattered Monkeyan. A slim hope! Sneered Slive. We watched those ships loading via spy star transmission. They're so packed with Thundarian pilgrims and their possessions, they could carry little by way of armament. Attack! Ship after ship of the convoy was blasted out of the sky. The Thundercats looked on in helpless rage. We're losing them, Jaga, said Panthro. We're losing all our ships. Except for ours, said Chitara. We haven't taken a single hit. No, Jaga replied. They know that the flagship would be carrying the Eye of Thundera. They won't risk losing it. Zap. The ship rocked slightly. Then again, as the Thundercats heard another zap and another. Grappling rays, exclaimed Panthro. This meant that the mutants would soon try to board the Thundercats' flagship. As the enemy craft drew alongside, Slythe formed his reptilian warriors into a boarding party. We won't need you for this, he hissed at his allies. My reptilians and I can handle it. <laughs> so that you can possess the Eye of Thundera for yourself, Slythe? Jackoman barked back sarcastically. No way! The other mutants crowded forward, and the boss monkeyan blasted a hole in the Thundercat ship with his ray gun. A warning siren whooped. We've been breached, said Panthro. Stand by to repel borders, cried Tigra, and the Thundercats leaped into action. Chitara moved so fast she was just a blur, the enemy swordsmen tried in vain to cut her down. They couldn't even keep Tigra in sight. Now you don't see me. Now you do. He mocked, using his power of invisibility. His fists seemed to come smashing at the mutants out of nowhere. Panthro was a master of Thundarian martial arts. 
with his flips, chops, and kicks. He seemed to be everywhere at once, each move taking out another enemy fighter. Panthro roared with laughter. <laughs> if you guys were as mean as you are ugly, then maybe you'd be trouble. Young Wily Cat and Wily Kit had their own way of repelling the attackers. Wily Cat used one of his powder pellets to blind them with a cloud of smoke. Wily Kit used one of hers to send them into violent sneezing fits. Meanwhile, Jaga was fighting off three mutants at once with his skilled swordsmanship. Where is your leader, that wretch Slythe? He demanded contemptuously. The reptilian was leading a frantic search for the precious eye. Nothing back there, Jacko Man reported. Any luck at your end, Slythe? No. What's in there? He pushed open a door. It would help if I knew what the Eye of Thundera looks like, said the Jacko Man. Have you ever seen it? He asked, following Slythe into the sword chamber. Yes, yes. And there it is, embedded in the hilt of the Sword of Omens. Lionel gripped the sword bravely, but it was too heavy for him to lift. Snarf tried to snarl ferociously at the invaders. You'd better get right out of here or you'll have Snarf the Fierce to deal with. Nyarf, nyarf. Slythe chuckled. <laughs> and what manner of laughable creature is this? Think I'm funny, do you, Snarf? Snarf! snarf. No! cried Lionel as his faithful old friend leapt at the reptilian's throat. The Jackal Man triggered a net gun. Poor Snarf was caught and hurled across the room, but he staggered upright. Where are they? Let me at them! Snarf! Snarf! All of them! Slythe ignored him, saying, Now, boy, give me the sword. Lionel growled. You shall not have it while I live. <laughs> that would suit me just fine. Slythe hissed. <laughs> Bark, Jackal Man. The cub threatens us. He can hardly hold on to that sword, much less lift it. Lionel knew they were right. But suddenly, his whole body seemed to vibrate. A thrum of power came from the sword, growing louder and louder. The eye opened with a brilliant flash and terrifying roar. Next thing Lionel knew, the sword was lifting in his hand. Its blade glowed with a fiery red light as it whirled around and around above the young prince's head. What, what's happening? Quavered Jackal Man. Back! Get back! Warned Slythe. Panic seized them as the sword whirled ever closer. Hissing and yelping, they scrambled to the door. No! Oh, 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 oh. Back to the ship! Slythe cried to his raiders. In moments, the enemy cruiser was in full flight. The Thundercats hurried to check on the young prince. Lionel! You're not hurt, asked Jaga. Nah, Snarf took a few lumps, but I managed to hold them off, the youngster boasted. You did it with the sword? Well, Lionel admitted sheepishly, the sword kind of did it for me. <laughs> <laughs> the other Thundercats laughed in relief, but the situation was bad. With their ship's navigational system damaged, they had no chance of reaching the distant galaxy they had chosen for their new home. Panthro tuned the video screen. See this puny little sun? I run a galactic scan for atmospheric compatibility, and this blue planet, the third one out, gives me a readout of 96%. The young prince looked puzzled. Atmospheric come... Come. Uh, that means we could breathe the air, Lionel, said Tigra. Even so, it, it's light years away, Chitara complained. Wily Cat made a face. Oh, yeah, we'd have to make the trip in the suspension capsules. Even worse, while the others hibernated, one Thundercat would have to stay awake to pilot the ship manually, 
Jaga had chosen this duty for himself, knowing he was bound to perish long before they reached their new home. He brushed aside all their protests. Enough! I am by far the oldest of you. Even though the suspension capsules slow down the aging process, some aging does take place. Even in suspension, I could not live long enough to complete the journey. So let's not have any more talk. Enter the capsules. Months and years went by. Jaga steered the ship bravely until he became too old and feeble. I can't go on. I pray the robot pilot can take it from here. His trembling fingers reached out to press the robot pilot button. Then he slumped over the controls. Long afterward, the Thundercat ship plunged into the Earth's atmosphere, but its landing rays failed and it crashed in a jungle, spilling objects all over. Among them were the suspension capsules and one broke open. Slowly, Snarf climbed out, rubbing his head. I just knew I wasn't going to like this. But what had happened to the young prince? Lionel! Lionel! Snarf shouted. He ran around, peering into the other suspension capsules until he saw the face he was looking for. He ripped the lid open. Wake up, Lionel! It, it's me! It's old Snarf! He cried, licking the boy's face. What are you doing, Snarf? Get away! Lionel tried to sit up and bumped his head. Ow! What in the... Oh, the suspension capsule. But how did it get to be so small? I was really worried, Lionel, said Snarf, hopping about excitedly. I was sure it was all going to turn out. But the prince was too puzzled to listen. Everything seemed to have shrunk compared to himself. You look a lot smaller too, Snarf. What's going on? And my hands, look at the size of them. He walked over to a pond. His reflection in the water showed a tall, strong young man. Then Jaga's voice came echoing back in his memory. Even though the suspension capsules slow down the aging process, some aging does take place. And suddenly, Lionel realized... Why, I'm grown! Snarf was rooting around the wreckage. He came running up, holding the prince's space teddy bear. Look what I have for you, Snarf, Snarf! Oh, what's this, Snarf? A toy? Good grief, I'm too big for toys. Can't you see that? His old friend was crestfallen. I guess you'll just always look little to faithful old Snarf. The mutant space cruiser came zooming down from the sky. Snarf gaped in dismay. Lionel, look out! He cried. The mutants are back! Snarf, Snarf! Landing rays flashed from the spaceship. A moment later, Slythe and his partners were teleported down. Lionel and Snarf ducked behind some bushes as they swarmed over the wreckage. Mutants? Lionel frowned. They look like, I don't know, like I should remember them. Yeah, real bad, Lionel. Oh, I just knew we hadn't seen the last of that bunch. Fearful and jittery, Snarf wriggled backward, deeper into the underbrush. Ow! What the gold gun? He turned to see what had jabbed him. It was the Sword of Omens lying against a log with its point aimed right at his back. Good grief, Snarf. What's the matter with you? We're in big trouble here and you bring me another stupid toy? Get away. The mutants were ransacking the Thundercat spaceship. Search carefully, his slithe. The Eye of Thundera must be in the wreckage somewhere. Uh, over here, the monkey in chattered. One of the Thundercats is still in his capsule and... and Oh, here's another! Snarling with excitement, the Jackal Man began hacking at a capsule. The other mutants joined in. An alarm bell rang in Lionel's memory. Those capsules, I... There's something 
important about them somehow. Something inside them that... Let me see. Something that... Suddenly, he remembered. No! Stop! He cried and charged out at the mutants. <laughs> and who is that? Snarled Jackal Man. What does it matter? Leered Slythe. The question will soon be, who was that? Lionel fought wildly, and Snarf tried to help, but they were outnumbered. The prince was hurled back into the jungle shrubbery. His hand felt something, the hilt of the sword that Snarf had tried to show him. The sword began to glow, and Lionel jerked as if from an electric shock. He picked up the weapon, frowning. This sword? I... I know this sword. It's... Oh, it, I can't remember. It's... A misty figure appeared, saying... lion -O. J Jaga? Is it really you? You're still with me? I will always be with you, lion -O. Pay heed, for it is your destiny that you hold in your hand. The Eye of Thundera, the source of the Thundercat's power. Yes, I remember. Sight beyond sight. The crossbar curled, and Lionel peered through the eye holes, then thrust out the sword at arm's length. It was growing bigger, and the eye was glowing brighter. Thunder! Thunder! Thundercats! cried the prince. A bolt of lightning shot up from the eye, and Lionel roared. Ho! The sound awoke his companions. They flung off the lids of their capsules and sprang out ready to fight. The mutants quailed in fear. The, the Thundercats! They're, they're loose! <laughs> Chattered the monkey in. <laughs> Chuckled Panthro, dealing blows right and left. And we're gonna loosen your bones for you, too! The Thundercats drove the enemy back. Suddenly, Chitara saw a new figure join the fray, swinging his mighty sword. Tigra, look who's joined us! Well, well, grown some, hasn't he? The mutants fled in panic. Back! hissed Slythe. Teleport yourselves back to the ships! But the Thundercats knew they had only gained a short breathing spell. The mutants will never rest until the Eye of Thundera is in their clutches, warned Panthro. That will never happen. I'll see to it, bragged Lion-O. Huh, get him, joked Wily Cat, and Wily Cat giggled. <laughs> One tiny skirmish, and he's suddenly a superhero. Panthro smiled tolerantly. Now, now. He did pretty good for his first time out. He did indeed, said Tigra. And a fine figure of a Thundercat you've grown up to be, lion -O. And so handsome, too, Chitara added. Snarf didn't do anything, of course. Just found the sword, that's all. Snarf, snarf. Panthro squared his shoulders. Now we'll have to go about seeing if we can survive in this place. We will survive and create a mighty new empire, Lionel declared, plunging the Sword of Omens into Earth's soil. I, Lionel, Lord of the Thundercats, proclaim it. Then, as the others laughed and clapped him on the back, uh, with your help, of course. <laughs> <laughs>
I sincerely hope that you enjoyed that and it brought back some childhood memories or made you actually want to pursue and find out a little bit more about the Thundercats. There has been so many people asking for a Thundercats movie, and in fact, somebody actually made a false trailer uh, taking footage from Brad Pitt in Troy and a few other people and kind of overlaying them to make them look like the Thundercats, and it was actually a pretty exciting idea. And if they made a Thundercats movie, I would definitely go and see it. You know, like I said, I wasn't a huge Thundercat fan, but that doesn't mean I couldn't be. Well, I would like to remind you that the Neverland Podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. And for you, the listeners of the Neverland Podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Now, I have been saying for weeks that they do have The Hobbit unabridged by J.R.R. Tolkien. So go and download your free audiobook today. Go to audibletrial.com slash neverlandpodcast. Once again, that is Audible Trial dot com slash neverland podcast and get your free audiobook now if you would like to make contact with me here at the neverland podcast please do send an email to podcast at neverlandpodcast.com find me on twitter at neverland pcast that is the letter p neverland pcast on twitter and on facebook Find me at facebook.com slash neverlandpodcast or do a search for the Neverland Podcast and come follow, like, whatever. Also, if you go to neverlandpodcast.com, you can find links to the Twitter and to the Facebook page right on the page. Also, you will find iTunes links there for any songs that I play a portion of or any other music that I can get for you that is related to the content of the program or even some video if I happen to find some. Uh, so yes, and when you purchase from iTunes, you will be helping out the show and I really do appreciate it. Just like I appreciate all of, the, all of you who are going to iTunes, going to Stitcher and downloading the shows, listening to the shows, enjoying the shows, telling your friends about it. Podcast or broadcasting it out on Facebook and Twitter, letting people know how much you're enjoying the show. Share the links. Um, I really do appreciate it. And also, I would appreciate if on Stitcher and iTunes, if you would go and write a review for the Neverland Podcast. It does help other people find the show, and so we can invite other people to come along with us on our journey to Neverland and put something a little bit positive out there for the rest of the world. But this is Jeremy signing off from the Neverland Podcast. It's time for me to fly on back home. We'll see you next week. <laughs>